Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Night and the Simple Truth. I know we normally meet during the day, but I took a job, and uh, believe it or not, I'm doing house cleaning. So um, it is what it is, but a uh, good opportunity came, and I decided to take it. So um, I have to balance this out and figure out if I'm going to pre-record something and post it and not record it on Sundays, or we're gonna have to do Sunday evening services like this. And you know that I do this, um, I provide this podcast, if that's what you wanna call it, because many people just don't simply go to church. And I know people are watching the video between YouTube and between Facebook, people are watching the videos and uh, they do reach out to me. So thank you very much. But um, yes, uh, I took a job uh, working for a local hotel, um, and it could be temp to permanent. So we have to see how things are going to go. Sorry, a little sore in the neck. But uh, I'm grateful for it. I really am. And I'm grateful for all of the prayers and support from all of you. Thank you so much. Um, prayer requests before we get into the Word of God. Uh, Ms. Pat Williams, Nate Williams' mom, is dealing with cancer. And I pray that you would... Um, really lift her up in prayer uh, we thank god for answers to prayer uh, but right now um, cancer is something so we also have another friend who's going to be relocating soon she knows who she is and i don't want to mention where she's going but she's going to be relocating soon and we pray for god to intervene there and bless her as she's going uh, we thank God for our friends who have healing, and we pray for those who are traveling. We pray for our friend Pat. We pray for our friends uh, Craig and his business down in Florida, who are always wonderful people. Um, I thank the Douglas family this past week, uh, Blythe and James Douglas. Uh, God bless them. Uh, continue to pray for them. They're great people. They just got married. So... Uh, lift them up in prayer, but they're great brothers and sisters in Christ as well. So uh, remembering my uh, sister Kelly as she's still trying to get answers from her doctors, all these things we're going to wrap together in prayer. And then we're going to get into the second half of Romans 6. And this is part, this is, well, this is part 15, I believe, in our study in Romans. But it's part two of abusing grace abusing the doctrines of grace and mercy. So we're going to be in Romans 6, and we're going to be verses 15 through 23. But let's go to prayer, and then let's get into the Word of God. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Father, as we come before you today, we ask you to help us. Lord, we pray for those who are sick that I mentioned. We do lift up Miss Williams, Miss Pat Williams. Father, we pray that you would touch her and heal her, help her family now, help her son and their daughter and other children and grandchildren to deal with this. Lord, she was very good to me as a child, and um, I really would like to see something great happen here. And in answer to prayer, Father, we trust the will of God in all things, but Lord, I pray that your will would be to heal her and to be given all the glory for it. Father, we thank you for our friends. We thank you for the Douglases. We thank you for our friends Pat and Craig and Chris here in North Carolina, Father, who are wonderful. We thank you for our friend and our dear friend. He's like a brother to me, Lord, Reverend William J. Martin. Father, I pray that you would bless Brother Martin and help him in his ministry, help him to do all the things, Lord, continue to bless him. And to bless his church, Father. Help them, Lord. Lord, we come before you today asking you to open up our minds and our hearts to what you have us prepared here in Romans 6. Father, we pray that we would not be abusers of your grace and mercy, Father, but that we would want to lift it up. Help us to remember we are not the arbiters of grace and mercy, but we are the ministers of it. And Lord, if you could help me today and touch my mouth, thank you. I would deeply appreciate it, Lord. Thank you for providing what you did for me as we have a job. Thank you for how you continue to provide for this family, Lord. We pray that even now somebody today would be able to repent, get closer to you, and get closer to your son, 
and that somebody would be saved. We thank you for all these things in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Turn with me in your King James Bibles, please. As you know that I teach and preach out of, we are going to be here in Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 15. I'm going to read through verse 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. He's talking about willingly sitting there and making a argument that you can do whatever you want because now you're under grace. There were morons, fools, then and now, who make this argument. He says, that's not what this is. He already went over in verses 1 through 14 that sin does not have dominion over us. We are not supposed to be serving it. And now he drives the point home. Sorry, the Apostle Paul drives the point home. He says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or be unto obedience unto righteousness. So who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve sin? Or are you going to serve righteousness? Now, you've been freed. You've been set free by the blood of Christ. You are no longer a bondservant to sin. Now, I'm not talking about living perfect. I'm talking about having a state of mind that says, I want to be better. I want to do better. You can't always use the excuse, well, I'm still growing. I hear that nonsense all the time. I'm still growing. Now, for some people, you got to grow up. You got to get it together. You got to stop the nonsense. Because he goes on to see, say here is that whom ye yield yourselves to, whom you obey, that's who your master is. Watch this, verse 17. But God be thanked that we were servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. What's that? That Christ came and he died for sinners, that he paid for the sin, and that you put your faith and trust in him to save you from your sin. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and thou shall be saved. He's saying you believe that, you've professed that. Well, if you profess that and you believe that, then something's got to change. Let me say that again. Something's got you. I keep telling you, this process, you were justified. Now this process is called sanctification. You are becoming more like Christ. And I don't mean to make humor of it, but boy, I don't know if in this body, this flesh, he's going to talk about the sin body, the decay, and what this thing is doing, and how it's constantly working against us. And to become more like Christ, I would like to be more like Paul. And I'm nowhere near there yet, but I pray that I can get to be more like this man. But if you are constantly, constantly with no with 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 no conscience of any kind, if the Holy Spirit doesn't tap on you and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? What's the matter with you? If you just go, hey, I'm just going to be mean, arrogant, rude, cruel. I'm going to do all these things. Well, those aren't the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long -term. Those are fruit. That is the fruit of the Spirit. You're going to have these things. There is no fruit of grace and mercy that says I can continue to live like a barbarian and a heathen. We're not talking about sinless perfection because it's not going to happen in this. But we're talking about who you yield yourself to. Because my friends... You are still commanded to obey. Now, how this works in the mind of God, I don't know. I know he knows everything, but then at the same time, we're commanded to obey. Obey. Do what you're told when you're told to do it. Now, the scripture later on says that the Lord chastises those who are his. The scripture talks about being chastised. And it talks about the Lord coming after those who are his. But right now, he turns around and he says... Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So now that you've been freed through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the cross, through your repentance for your sin, it's now time to turn around and to go in the other direction. Now the scripture says the righteous man falls seven times and rises again. We don't use the fall as an excuse, but it shows perfection. You're not going to be sinlessly perfect, but your mindset Everything about you now is changed. 
1 Corinthians Apostle, same Apostle Paul says that the natural man understands not the things of God, neither can he know them. We have the mind of Christ. Now that you've been set free from sin, you have the mind of Christ. You can sit there and you can say, you know what, I am free. I don't have to do these things anymore. And it's not you trying now. When these things come up, you go back to the cross of Christ. You claim the cross of Christ. Only in the cross is there freedom from the cigarettes and addiction and alcoholism and all of the other proclivities. And I'm trying to keep this friendly because our friends at YouTube and other places might not want to publish this. But you know the sin that comes at you. And the scripture talks about shaking those sins, those weights, which so easily beset us so we can run the race. Well, guess what? Many of you are not growing in grace and truth, as the scripture says. You're not being sanctified, being made more like Christ as you walk in this life. Many of you don't grow because you're not in the word of God like you should be. And because you're not yielding yourselves to righteousness. None of us are perfect. Watch this. I speak after the manner, verse 19, of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. You were this way, now go this way. You were going left, now go right. You were on your way to hell. You were going down. You know that that life did nothing for you. You know that you're stuck and you can't get free. Well, now is the time. If you've never repented, it's time to repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sin. It's time to repent. Because if... You are continually yielding yourselves to servants of unrighteousness. You can't claim to be saved. What? If you consciously sit there on a weekly, daily basis and say, eh, I'm just going to continue to do this, and you have no conviction of the Holy Spirit, and I'm not saying you got to run everything you do in your life past me. Filter it through this. The word of God, what are you doing? What are you up to? What's it causing? What pain? What are the consequences? And last but not least, if you're going to go do this thing, would you invite Jesus to do this thing with you? Verse 20, for whom ye were servants of sin, ye were free from, you were free from righteousness. Wow, so while you were servants to sin, you were free from righteousness. You weren't chained to righteousness. What? You are a servant of sin. What? You were a bond servant. You were chained to it. You couldn't get away. Now your chains have been set free. You can give up this nonsense. Hey, everything from gluttony. Hello? Gluttony? Hello? I know. To sexual immorality. To lasciviousness. To drug addiction. It can be cured at the cross. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The end of those unrighteous things is death. The only thing coming at the end is, and he's not talking about just physical death. The scripture talks about the second death. It talks about being cast into the lake of fire. It does talk about going to hell. A lot of people don't want to talk about going to hell. There is a hell. And if you die without knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you are not covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. If you die willingly, willingly, and making an excuse, hey, die, if you die chasing that money and you're not chasing, I know, and you're not chasing righteousness, what are you yielding yourself to? What do you obey? Because if you're obeying unrighteousness, there's a lot of deep theology I could bring you right now, but guess what? A lot of people can't handle it. You have the Holy Spirit living inside you. You bring him into those situations, and that's scary, but it's true. And this old stuff you used to do make you ashamed if everybody found out. 
If you're doing something that would shame you, if everybody found out, you might want to repent. Go to the cross. Hey, you want to know something right now? A lot of you need to tell God that I like doing these things and I know they're wrong. I need some help. But that help cannot come just by simply you trying. You have to put your faith and trust in what Christ did on the cross, that he freed you from it and that you can go forward. Watch this. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting. You were this way. Now you're this way. You were a servant of sin, Satan, your flesh, death. Now you're a servant of Jesus Christ, God, our father. And you can live a decent, holy life. I know I'm speaking as an example. I'm just one sinner talking to another. My friends, I'm not saying this is easy. But what it is, is it's a lot easier than the penalty of what's coming. Sin brings all kinds of consequences and problems. And you can choose your sin, but you can't choose the consequences. You all know I went to federal prison at one point. Who would have ever thought, but as I yielded my members to unrighteousness, I could not shake the consequences. And he came after me and he brought me back and he said, this is what I've called you to do. What have you been called to do? Hmm. What are you yielding yourself to? What? What's got you? What's got you? And some of you, why won't you repent and come to Jesus Christ? Why? What is it? What are you doing in your life that's so wonderful that the joy of salvation, the happiness, and the peace of heart and mind that comes from the gospel, that comes from the cross of Jesus Christ, that it could provide you. Why do you continue to be there? Why? You can change. It can't happen, but it can't happen without Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This flesh is going to betray you because it's rotting. It lives. It's in sin. It's affected by sin because it's decaying. You have been justified. You are presently, by the grace of God, being sanctified. And one day you're going to be glorified when we meet the Lord in the air. When that day comes, you will have a new body to match the new spirit that is inside you. Then that day you will be perfect before God. But if your pursuit every day is not do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, if your pursuit every day is not thinking of the right thing to do, the godly thing, the righteous thing to do, you have a problem. I'm not talking about some sin, that, but we also have some little things that we doctor and that we hug. And we go, oh, this one's mine. I don't want to let it go. Let it go. And if you do, and you give it to Christ, and you put it at the cross, you're going to live a much freer, happier life. There's joy in Jesus Christ. There's happiness. And all sin can bring is death and sadness. Today, choose to yield yourself to righteousness and not unrighteousness. And please, choose salvation today. Today, make that change. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and I will give you rest unto your soul. Get that rest or die in your sin and face hell. Yes, the choice is yours. Choose today whom ye will serve. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. We thank you for Christ who died on the cross for our sins, Father. We pray that people would make that choice today, that they would repent, pick themselves up, get back on board, and go forward with their sanctification. We pray for those to get saved today. They need to be saved. Father, we pray that you would save somebody to help them to repent and to choose Jesus Christ, choose your son. 
and to put their faith and trust in him. Lord, we pray that today would be that day of salvation. Thank you for everything you've done for us. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. If those of you like what you hear, then you can support me. There are links below. Also uh, in the description and everything, there's links. Um, you can go to paypal.me backslash brother lake or in cash app dollar sign brother lake if you want to support us. Everything is deeply appreciated. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you again next week on The Simple Truth.